You know, my journey into the God First Life began several years ago, actually when I was working in a bar, uh, very much like the one I'm sitting in right now. You know, I was in college and I was doing what most college kids do, just uh, going to school and partying and having a good time and really not giving much thought to my future. And it was very interesting and I can't explain exactly when and exactly how it began to happen. But what I can say is I just began to, to sense a, a, a drawing to God and a, and a drawing to find out what life is really about. And I began to realize that all the things that I was involved in, you know, they seemed very temporal. Everything seemed very temporal to me. And, you know, I had an aunt that was praying for me and uh, God was responding to her prayers and he was drawing me to him. And so to kind of make a long story short, just right in the middle of my college experience and working at the bar and, and everything else, uh, I gave my life to Christ. And it was the best decision that I ever made. And when I gave my life to Christ, I began to experience Jesus' love and forgiveness and all of those wonderful things that all of us experience when we receive Christ. But I still had a whole lot of questions. You know, I, I just had questions about God, about the Bible, about life in general, you know, um, is Jesus really the only way to heaven? And, um, you know, things that there things in the Bible that I really didn't understand. And, and there were just so many issues that I had questions on and challenges. And I'll never forget one day I was, uh, I was walking home from class and that morning I had actually read in my devotional, I'd actually read Matthew 6.33 that says, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and everything that you need will be added unto you. And it's, I was walking home from class that day. I was, you know, once again in my mind, well, God, what about this? And what about my friends here? And what about, I don't understand this. And I'll, I'll never forget. It was like God stop me in that scripture, Matthew 6.33, came to my heart, you know, Stovall, seek first the kingdom of God and everything that you need will be added unto you. I'll, I'll, I'll provide everything that you need if you'll just simply put me first. And can I tell you that that, that day changed my life forever. From that day forward, anytime I had a question, I just simply would, in my mind, I would just put God first, even if I didn't understand it, even if I didn't know the outcome, regardless of what I was experiencing or the questions I had, I just began a practice of as best I could to put God first in that situation. And sure enough, if I would do that and I would trust Him, the answers that I was searching for and the things that I desired and um, you know the, the, the things in life that we all want, it was like, as I put God first, all of those answers and things were provided. And so Matthew 6.33 has really been like a, a, a mission statement or a theme scripture in my life. And over the past 24 years, I have kept that scripture as the theme foundational principle in my walk with God. And I can tell you this, that even though that scripture on the surface is very simple, and that's the beauty of it, it is very simple. It is very, very deep and it is very, very profound and it is very, very uh, uh, practical on so many fronts. And so what I want to do is I want to invite you into that journey with me as over the last 24 years, I've grown more and more in understanding what Matthew 633 is all about. I had so many questions. You know, was Jesus really the only way to heaven? What was God's plan for my future? What about all the other religions of the world? Okay, what about the forgiveness thing? Like, am I forgiven no matter what, you know, for the rest of my life? Or do I need to uh, ask for forgiveness every time I'm forgiven? Um, you know, why is there so much evil in the world? If, if you know, if, if God's there and He loves people, why does He allow so many things to go on that hurt people and, and, and so many questions like that. Probably most of you have an iPhone or a smartphone just like I do. And you know, one of the things that we love about our smartphones are the apps. There's an app 
for just about everything now. And the reason that people love apps, if you're like me, is because apps are simple. You know, even though underneath the app, there are layers and layers of complexity and programming and all those types of things for the end user like me, it's just real simple. It's just a one step, I press this app and that information is readily available to me. You know, people tell me all the time, you know, life is just not simple. It's, you know, life is hard, life is complicated. And I understand, of course, there's complex issues. However, God never intended us to live a complex or complicated life. I believe with all of my heart that He intended our relationship with Him to be very simple, very powerful, very fulfilling, but very simple. And Matthew 6.33 is much like the app on your iPhone in that on the surface, it's very, very simple. For the end users, us, in putting God first, God makes it very, very simple. However, underneath Matthew 6.33, we find a wealth of, of, of biblical treasure and just a wealth of, of knowledge and principles and truth that can really, really empower us. You know, Matthew 6.33, I look at it like the app of the Bible. It's the God first app. We, we have a touch point to that and it really uncomplicates our lives in so many ways. You know, as Jesus said, seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness. That means his way of doing things and all these things will be added unto you. Right there, he tells us that, hey, if we can understand order, truly what order can do for our lives, then man, we're going to experience great blessings in a new family, a new life, and a new freedom. We have a new family in our relationship with Christ. We're, we're, we're born into the family of God, and that's an exciting new family. There's also a, a new life that we have in Christ, an abundant life. We don't just have a position in God's kingdom, but we have an exciting function where there's a purpose and a plan. And then we also have a new freedom. That's the, the funnest part, that God is going to bless us with everything that we need. That He loves to give us the desires of our heart. But all of those things start with order. That's what the God first life is predicated on, understanding how order works in your life. You know, most people, when they look at their lives, if there's unhappiness there, they think that it's an issue of need. They think, you know, that they need more money or a better job. Uh, that would bring them happiness. In fact, a lot of people's plan for their lives, they think they'll have a happy life if this is that they have a good career, they make a lot of money, they have a, a good spouse, uh, they don't have much, you kind of put a minus by the pain and suffering, you know, not much pain and suffering, all that kind of adds up to a happy life. But you know, that's not true. Having all the things on the outside will not bring us happiness. And we all know of people who have seemingly everything a person could want, but they're still not fulfilled or happy on the inside. And I think a powerful illustration of this is an interview that Tom Brady, the New England Patriots quarterback that has three Super Bowl rings, uh, had on 60 Minutes. And I wanna read you some of that interview that I have here in the God First Life book. It says, in an interview with 60 Minutes, New England Patriots star quarterback Tom Brady expressed both surprise and disappointment that his unquestioned fame and success had failed to bring him the satisfaction that he craved. Why do I have three Super Bowl rings and still think there is something greater out there for me? Brady wondered out loud to CBS correspondent Steve Croft. I mean, maybe a lot of people would say, hey man, this is what it is. This is great. I've reached my goal, my dream. My, this is my dream life. But me, I think, God, there has to be more than this. There has to be more than this. At that, Croft looked at him in the eye and asked, well, then what's the answer? Tom Brady replied, I wish I knew. I wish I knew. Well, I want to let you know that that answer is putting God first and having that relationship with Jesus Christ. You see, happiness is not about becoming greater or getting better or having more. Happiness 
is about order. When we have the proper order in our life, happiness is just a byproduct. God created us to have a divine order in our life. And when that order is there, God's blessing is a byproduct. I like to say it this way. When order is restored, blessing is released. When order is restored, blessing is released. So many people look at happiness and their lives from a filter of need. They look at their life and they look at the, the lack or the hurt or the anxiety or the dysfunction. And they say, man, if I only had more of this and less of this or more of that or better that, then I would be happy. But happiness is not an issue of need. It's an issue of order. A lot of people think, well, Stovall, I mean, you know, what is all this stuff about happiness? I mean, walking with God, it's about holiness, right? It's not about happiness. Well, here's what I want to say. Holiness and happiness go hand in hand. Jesus is not against happiness. Jesus just redefined what happiness is. He told us that if we go out and strive for all of these things that we think are going to make us happy, those things are actually not going to make us happy. They're going to have the opposite effect on us. But if we understand priorities, if we understand the order that God has for our lives, once our lives are in order, well, happiness is a byproduct. Of course, Jesus wants you happy. Of course, Jesus wants you fulfilled. Of course, Jesus wants you satisfied in a life in him and a life in his presence. But if we can just simplify our lives and come down to a very simple principle and understand that when our lives are ordered correctly, blessing and happiness are a byproduct and are automatically released to us. I'm telling you, it will really change the way that we think, the way that we act, and the way that we live our lives. Remember, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness in everything. You know what? I studied that word everything in the Greek, and you know what it means? It means everything. Everything that you need will be added unto you. When order is restored, blessing is released. And I want to invite all of you to continue with me for these next few weeks. And we are going to journey into some of the things that I've learned and experienced over these last 24 years of walking with God in unpacking Matthew 6:33 and truly understanding what a God first life is all about. I believe it's going to be a great blessing to you. I'm so glad that you're here with some of your friends. It's going to be a great next few weeks. I'll see you next time.